Is there any, it doesn't literally dead end right here. So yeah, we're in the cave. Are you seeing lights in the field? I saw a light in the field, yes. I see it too. <laughs> You're off the path, it's over here. We got a light way over here, she's saying. cabin. It is a very windy day. We actually think this might end up being the last like decent weekend of the year. Um, so we're hoping we can get some big footing in. Um, over the next couple days we've got less here and Adam's coming in soon. So hopefully stuff happens. So far it's quiet. We've only been here for like a matter of hours. See. Look, the long and short of it is, I'm not a Bigfoot researcher. I've been an enthusiast for years, but at the end of the day, I'm just a filmmaker who stumbled onto a property that has potential activity taking place. Due to this fact, I've been wanting to get people out here who have their own approaches to the act of investigating a Bigfoot hotspot. People who know what they're looking for and how to collect it. Les Odell has been investigating Bigfoot sightings in the state of West Virginia for years and he's someone I trust. Wes has a level-headed approach to seeking Sasquatch, and he's someone who doesn't just jump at every noise in the woods. He's also more open to some of the stranger sides of the subject than even I am, due to the sheer volume of reports he's taken over the years since he started his organization, West Virginia Cryptids and Strange Encounters, or CASE, as it's known. I listen to all of it. I don't, I don't discriminate against any of it, either, because there, there have been times where folks have called me and said, hey, nobody else will listen to me. And, you know, for a case in point, there's a guy said he swears he saw one on the road as he was coming down the road in his truck. He was a delivery driver. This thing turned, come, like, as he was coming, he stopped, but it turned toward his truck. And he thought it was going to go to all fours like you hear a lot of them do. But he said, no, it actually transformed and, like, shapeshifted into, like, a deer and ran into the woods. Uh, so I keep those and mainly because I, I want to be able to separate, you know, maybe what the weird stuff is has nothing to do with what, you know, maybe what you saw or, or other people seen or have had, are seeing. Maybe there is an animal out there, but that maybe there's something weird and strange that's completely separated or different. Yeah. I've actually thought that before yeah. too, like the, the two don't necessarily have to be like yeah. mutually exclusive or connected even like, yeah. It is nighttime, obviously. Um, we have a big storm blowing in from the uh, west right now. Should be hitting here literally any minute. Uh, so we got the winds really starting to kick up. And uh, uh, actually, the wind is, is uh, just now kicking up. Earlier, it was actually really still. And the moon was out, and it um, it's warm, but it, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to get kind of nasty here for about four hours, it looks like. So Les is going to be sleeping out in the cold, and uh, we'll have to see how the rest of this night goes. I don't know that we're going to have any activity out here tonight, mostly because I think at some point we're just going to have to retreat to the cabin. Les and... Uh, Heather are out there. Heather's been putting crystals out in those woods just to see if anything happens, if they get moved around or whatever. So they're going to check. But all in all, a very quiet first night, which is unusual. It's also early, though. It's only like 7.45. The time change just happened. So we'll see if anything takes place tonight. All right, so we came over here to check out some of the things that were hung in the woods just to see if anything has been moved. Um, this section of woods 
We didn't have anything in before, but this right down here, you can't tell with night vision, but this is where the footprint and the knuckle cast were. Uh, so we decided to put stuff up to see if anything got moved, so we're gonna go check some of that out. We did already see that this hasn't been moved. It's just a bag with copper in it. There are ones that are hanging up on some of these branches. I just have to remember which one because they all look the same. <laughs> all right, these ones. All right, so those haven't been moved either then. Maybe they're not gonna mess with stuff here. I also wanted to get uh, things that ha were like in a bag because <clears throat> when we went to the Sasquatch outpost, yeah. it was mentioned that some investigators put like more complicated things out that would require like hand manipulation. Right. And so I thought if I had something that was in a bag also stuck where it'd have to be pulled off, but then they'd have to open it. I guess just to see how far well, they'll push it.
That morning, Les and I decided to head up to the hill behind the abandoned cabin. On a previous trip here, Andy Maskey and myself believed we both heard strange sounds coming from these woods. One of the noises Andy had heard was what he believed was rock clacking, a reported Bigfoot-related activity that involves two rocks being struck together for unknown purposes. This might have been bolstered somewhat by the rocks that Les and I found in the creek bed, which was actually sitting on top of the down leaf canopy, as if placed there. We also discovered a dead deer, presumably one that got away from a local bow hunter, as well as evidence that the area was once strip mined in the form of borehole rock. Stopping at the cabin to grab a uh, trail camera SD card. The last time we had uh, left this trail cam, we had no photos on it. Um, so hopefully this time it's a little different. Nothing. Nothing, nothing terribly exciting happening today. It's been overall the quietest 24 hours I've spent out here. So hopefully that doesn't hold up tonight. What we got? Well, something broke these. You know what it is, and there's a, you can see there's one little hair right there. Like little bite marks, two marks, or, or claw marks on them. What can what would do that kind of thing? The only thing I can think of, I mean, with the claw marks and stuff. Yeah. It could have been a, a small bear, maybe. You got a little, like a darker spot there. Yeah, it, I'm just wondering maybe, I mean, bobcats are kind of spotted. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that's maybe what that is from. Maybe. So right now we're up above the cabin. You can see the pond down there. I don't know if you can actually see the cabin, but it's right through. Right down there. There's a lot of noise that happens up here, a lot of like tree knocks and stuff during, I don't know that lately we've had as much activity up here, but it seems like it's a good spot because they can observe us, I guess, would be the idea. We're also not far from where we found the track. Something has been Falling a bit too. We busted off looking here. It almost looks like. I mean, that might. If that's a as if that's a rub, it's a it's a it's a big deer. Big deer rub. Yeah. Hmm. Or, what do you think? Does it look like? Antler rub, or does it There's look There's a like reason I have you here. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm I mean, learning. I mean, deer can do that. But I didn't, don't think it busted the tree over. That's fresh, though. Now, how the heck did some of those branches get under that? I'm not gonna get into tree structure stuff, but yeah. That little one? Yeah. Yeah, it wraps all the way around. Yeah, wrap the whole way around and goes underneath. Underneath that one. Those branches. Yeah, that makes no sense. Tree goes down. Up. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but there's kind of a curve there. And it goes all the way around, almost weaving around that tree. And some of these branches are like underneath. These are. Yeah. Deer rub? Yeah, they look like deer rubs. Big ones. Normally you know, small trees. That deer we found a bit ago, that's that's plenty. Yeah, deer's plenty big enough to do that. Les thinks he just got a whistle. 
we're in the pine forest way down. We're almost to the road, actually. And ahead of him, he said he heard a whistle. No, I can't whistle. It wasn't me. I, I did, I went and I heard. Yeah. But not quite that high pitch. It's a nice X. Yeah, that's what I was trying to look at. And that caught my eye right there. It's stuck in the ground. This one here looks like it's got a root ball on it, though. Yeah. That one's got a root ball on it. What did you hear? Like, 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 not the way I, the way I was whistling. It was more like, like, kind of. Can we get up there? Let's go. Okay. Whoa, I just heard it again. It's right here, somewhere. Oh. You hear it? Yeah. The branches are whistling. Squeak and yeah. like a... When you're in a place that has consistently strange activity like this, it's easy to let your mind wander, consciously or subconsciously. The noise we'd heard did sound like a whistle, and the fact that it happened in a location where we'd heard what we believed might be Bigfoot activity, not to mention found what we believed is a Bigfoot track, only heightened the situation. Keeping your excitement under control is just a part of the game in a place like this. Not everything is Bigfoot, and when you do experience something that might be, well, it's usually in your face enough that you don't have to guess as to what's actually going on. Why are these, these, there's no animals or anything in these photos. We've never caught a coyote on any of these. Well, that one there's too high, probably. Yeah, it's pointed too, too, too high. Les has a good point. It's pointed too high, Heather. So, the secret to all of this thus far for me has been the constant frustration that is coming from the fact that night after night we come out here and thus far it's pretty much solely been sounds in the night uh tree knocks um maybe the occasional rock throw <laughs> uh we we haven't even really had any vocalizations so there is a frustration to this for me. I want more. I want more. I need more. I want some sort of interaction beyond just this vague kind of stuff that's going on. In general, this has also been the quietest couple days we've ever had in here. It's just very little is happening today, especially. Uh, last night was dead. And today, there's been literally nothing. So, we'll see if anything happens tonight. We're about to get hit with a rainstorm for the next uh, four hours, something like that. And the rain is just starting. I'm just starting to feel the rain. So, we'll see if anything happens once that's all over. But for now, it's dead. Absolutely dead.
That was wild. I have no idea if that is going to be So right over here, something just took off. So that's pretty cool. Might have been a deer. I don't really know. I'm just making noise because I guess I'm trying to let them know we're here. Let them know we're here. And we want to play. I think. I'll tell you, sometimes there's a legitimate like moment where you realize what you're messing with, and it's it's a little intimidating. <laughs> An eight foot tall hairy monster in the woods. It's extremely windy in here. But I'm hearing what sounds like footfalls. What you doing, buddy? You missed it, me. No. Yeah, he's the best hider. It's very early, but it's also like 30 degrees out here. This is our first like cold night. Adam just got here from Tennessee. Uh, so anyway, Les, let's go over this again. Okay, you're telling me it was a, it was a bright LED, red light, like a single light. Right. Single you, point of light. You were standing down off the porch and Heather was up at the door. You guys were talking and I walked up to the, the bottom of the steps and looked across the pond. Like if you look you know, just like kind of stri not straight, but in, up in an angle a little bit. I seen a bright red light up in the trees. It, it looked like I, you know, it could have, like you see on like on a, a cell tower or something. But yeah. there's no there's no cell towers. I mean, we we know that. Yeah. And it was really bright. And I don't know if it was the way I moved or what, but it kind of looked like it went to the left a little bit and kind of. Faded out, and then when I was trying to point out to you, I, could, I didn't see it again when I walked down around the, around to the bottom of the, behind the, around behind that tree that's okay. out by the steps. Up here, and okay. I was walking down, and you were standing right like, like over here. Yeah. And and uh, Heather was there, and I went to go up on the step. And I looked across, and I seen a red light. You see that right there where the big forks of the trees are? Yeah. It was right up. Like there's a hole right there. Yeah. It was right in that area right there. And there's nothing there because there's just more trees because right. the bank goes up. Yeah. You would, I would, like it was like if a cell tower was standing right there and you could see the light blink on the cell tower. It was that kind of light. It wasn't blinking, but it was that kind of light. Like a so when he said something about a bright red light, I think I was looking considerably lower. I was looking toward the ground. I didn't realize. He was high. He was looking a lot higher than I was. So where he's looking is, what, 20 feet up? Well, 30 feet, something 30, like that. 30, 35 feet up. So I didn't see it. Les, I have no idea, dude. I don't either. Where's the, where's this camera at? Yeah, we got. Did you get it on there? No. All right. So where did this, where's everything happen so far? Like it's all over the place? Most of the activity so far, like when we've experienced stuff was right down this road. Okay. Um, right outside the cabin, but that's because, you know, at night, typically this is when the activity starts, nine o'clock. Okay. And nine o'clock every time. And the banging is here last night. I don't know. 
how much more we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, my kid is already asleep, so I can't go too far from the cabin. Uh, but the other guys might do stuff. I have no idea. So far, all we've experienced is a red light about 35 feet up in a tree, which is our first, maybe our second incident of high strangeness. If you in include the, uh, the night where for five hours we had an, um, just an endless sort of like very high pitched hum that we haven't been able to figure out what that was. Uh, but other than that, this is our only like really weird incident. So red light, 35 feet up in a tree moving around. Yeah, so what happened is we were getting ready for bed and Adam heard, uh, hold on, I'll get, I'll get back to Adam. A combination of like a wood knock and a, like a, like a heavy footstep. Like I heard, I heard, I thought something was, was behind me coming down the hill behind me and immediately I thought like bear. <laughs> and so, but I turned around, there wasn't anything there, but it was definitely weighted, whatever it was. And then some sort of knocking along with it. Okay. Unless you heard it too. Yeah, I was standing on the porch on the back side of the cabin here mm -hmm. and heard it. And then I heard Adam come running down. <laughs> I was like, what the world? I swear they like to wait until we're like going to bed. I'm for real going <laughs> to... Of course we weren't recording, but if Les heard it, that means the recorder is going to have picked it up. Yeah. Oh, dude, that recorder should have picked it up, because I mean, yeah, it was not soft. Pretty uh, exciting end to the evening. I'm calling it an end. Uh, day number two. Today's like kind of the big day. We're going to go on a hike later to a neighboring property where there's a cave. It's also the most, uh, the largest like parcel of dense forest that I can find when I'm looking at the maps. We're gonna go over the land maps too for this specific property. Last night, we did not have much happen. We had the incident with um, Adam getting rushed or whatever happened, we don't know. And then I thought around two, uh, 245 that I heard wood on metal uh, followed by running outside the cabin but none of that was caught on camera we haven't gone over the audio yet though that should be on audio so we'll go over the audio recorder that we left out and see if we can find anything um, from that but that's about it it was a really 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 quiet night but it was also raining again for the large part and now it's snowing because this is Ohio and it's November Adam, let's go to the spot where whatever happened so I can see where you think it was. So last night it was around, I don't know what time that Probably was. like 9.45? I, I, I was recording on my phone. So I have the, and I literally had just clicked my phone off okay. when it happened. But I was standing here just kind of like re recording around and whatever else and had my light on mm -hmm. and then kind of turned back this way. And I don't know how to describe it other than I thought that... Um, I thought that one of you guys was behind me mm -hmm. because it sounded like coming from up here almost something taking like steps down and I was trying to do it a second ago it was like a like a like a obvious like footfalls yeah. and it sounded bipedal because there was a couple of them but I mean I turned around immediately and didn't see anything and shine my light there but it was sounded like something almost trying to like cautiously move down the hill mm -hmm. Um, but it was he like it was heavy. You know, you hear people talk about you can tell that you can tell that it was something heavier. It wasn't. I mean, I'm from Tennessee. I know what deer sound like and what smaller animals sound like, and it wasn't that. I mean, it sounded like two big, two two or three big footsteps coming down the side of the hill. Enough that it it startled me enough that I almost fell down the hill behind us trying to run away like a like a wimp. So yeah, it was definitely something. I don't, but I don't know what. You didn't think it was like a limb falling out? No, it, no, it really had like, it had the, the, the cadence of, of footsteps. Right. Yeah, you were over there. Okay. I was standing right here on that end of the porch and I heard, I didn't hear the footsteps, but I heard like what sounded like a thump or like a doll knock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear anything else? I didn't. Just I, him running? Did I heard, yeah, because when <laughs> I, I heard it and turned around, that's when I heard him running down through here. Yeah. Yeah, so up here, 
there is a trail that you can actually drive the gator down um, and it comes out and goes all the way down to it's right here it goes all the way down to the other path that runs in front of the cabin Corey and I actually took it one day so this be a super easy way to travel down this hill yeah this is like this general area is, I mean, is where it came from I didn't realize there's a trail up here yeah this goes all the way up though comes out at that field at the top okay. you... so you did stop recording the I portal. stopped literally this I clicked it off and mm -hmm. then and then three seconds after is when I heard it okay. but yeah it was up this direction for sure because I was I was down there by the building and I, and I heard it up this way and that's where you heard it too right like up this it, it comes back up the yeah This is the pipeline where our one trail cam is. It's all the way down there. Huh. That's interesting because They could really easily come in up here, just come right yeah, around back of the half to get all the side of that hill. I didn't even I didn't realize there was a connecting point for that. This, I mean, that connects to the whole property right here. Yeah. You would go, because in that direction is where that really dense woods is where we're, we're going to go later. Okay. In fact, I think we follow this pipeline most of the way. So that actually dumps out right behind the cabin. It's like the path of least resistance. Yeah. This whole thing connects yeah. right there. Yeah, that's so what I was telling you yesterday. Where you, had it and you got that gate at the bottom. It makes an elbow and comes this way. I mean, you could... Yeah. Let's see where they would go. You think that tree was what you heard? It, no, because it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a, 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 a crack in a fall or anything. I mean, it was. It was a. I mean, it was a thud. Like it was a thud, thud, thud. So I mean, I mean, it sounded like something walking on two legs. Obviously, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I. There's like the only thing I heard was like one. Yeah. Like it. It wasn't quite like a wood knock. Yeah. It was just a thud, like a head wood sound to it. But I didn't hear all the other. Well, almost what I heard sounded like it had like like pressure to it, like something taking a step, thudding, and then you could continue to hear the rest of whatever it was. I mean, I guess it could have been a branch falling or a larger branch falling and then thud, thud, but it just, I mean, it sounded like I thought you were walking up behind me or I thought Seth was there when I turned around and you weren't and realized nobody was. So that's my pipeline right through there. That's where I saw. So then this is the pipeline where our trail cam is, is right over there. Hunker down and hide out. I feel like this might be the spot to do it. Nothing about this looks weird to you or unordinary? Yeah. Okay. Like, what's all this? This has all just been. Holy. Shit. This has just been thrown here. It's, uh. Right there. I mean, I see evidence of little things. Deer. Like, here's a, yeah. There's a buck rub right there. So, you don't think anything about this is weird? No. Nah. This stuff just piled here? It's not necessarily piled. It's, uh. That's briar. 
This one, these ones here, I broke off. They were, or one of them I did. It's extremely dense. Mm -hmm. If we got something out here that's even, you know, our height, it's a little rough to get through here. Right. If we got something bigger than us, we're going to have, there's going to be some kind of obvious trail. I mean, if we're out here looking for seven, eight foot, 800 pound creature, it's not going to come in here. If it does, it's going to hide for high, but it's not going to do it quickly without making a bunch of noise. See, I don't know that I agree with that part. I agree that there's probably nothing to that, but I feel like if, if it's, if they're, as, if they're that big, I feel like they're nimble enough. That I didn't say they can't come in and hide out. It's going to make them work. Yeah. It's going to make them work. This is kind of what I was looking for, though. Yeah. It's like a place where it was dense enough that even during this time of year, they would head into or could head into where you're not going to get deer hunters coming in. Someone that works with animals, any thoughts on this aspect of it? No? I mean, I agree with Les. I think there'd be a lot more destruction if there was something that large coming through here. Even, even if they were, even if they're on all fours like people talk about, you're still going to leave a wide, much it's wider. Gonna be a tunnel. Yeah. There's that weird... Mm -hmm. Can't even hear it. There's nothing. Right before, like, I literally turned and looked down the hill like, immediately after I heard it. I heard it. Oh my god, that was like a big... Yeah. There's nothing there. There's too much. It's like there's wind or something right where we don't have that audio. You can't hear anything from. You can't hear anything. Except for us responding to it after we heard it. When we thought that you can hear that. Following our audio review, we decided to meet up with Corwin Mosier to go over the maps he had put together of the property. We wanted to examine not just the land where the cabin sat, but the adjoining properties as well. We were aware of acres and acres of forest, but Corwin had also mentioned a small cave not far away, as well as rumors of a much larger cave that was situated a day's hike beyond this parcel of land. The back cabin, mm -hmm. this is the, the lake right here mm -hmm. for the back cabin, so right. the cabin's right up in there. So we're going to be crossing the road here, and this, you can see, obviously you can see right here is the cut for the pipeline. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna be coming in. There's a valley here, up the big hill, which will be fun to watch you guys go up that. And then across that, I think we're gonna, I do believe I remember seeing that open fields the last time I went through. So I would say probably somewhere right about here, we're gonna be cutting in, and I would guess that it's probably right in here somewhere. All right, so we are about to head off uh, to find the uh, cave on the adjoining property to where we are and we're gonna go into some pretty dense forest. There's also a pipeline over there. So it's similar to where we've been. It's just a different look. It's also freezing out here. It was snowing earlier. Um, this is our first really cold weather here in Ohio. So we're still getting used to this insanity. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go see what we can find. It's interesting because it is, it's huge in the way that it connects to a lot of other pieces of property, at least the way I understand it. And there's wide open fields and you go into some pretty thick kind of foliage. Foliage. That's it. Yeah. But... yeah it's just varied. There's, there's, there's a lot and it's, it's, it's still, even though the trees or the leaves are starting to fall, it's still, it's still really thick. How's it going? It's good. That's really cool. Wow. Can you get in there? Yeah. I heard a loud. 
Yeah, it's little, but it's really cool. How big? Uh, like maybe 15 feet back. Go, go. Can you get in so I can get mine or no? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to see if I can get in. All right. Ah. Not big enough for fucking <sighs> Bigfoot, though. Is there any, it doesn't literally dead end right here? Yeah, like All it, right. it goes around the corner. Well, actually, I mean, I don't know, I can't tell if it goes further back, but it's, I mean, it's not big enough for. All right. So yeah, we're in the cave. Uh, I don't know, the cave is probably generous. It's big enough for Adam and I to be up in here. Uh, maybe 15, 20 feet. It is not very big. Uh, but there's where we just came from. A lot of water coming out of here. Yeah, there is. Nice stream. This idea of like Bigfoot's hiding out in caves is old school. I would not say that you're gonna hide out in this cave though. It's not big enough to hide out in. However, I would say if this cave exists, there might be another one uh, somewhere. So it's cool. Yeah. You ready to get out of here? Uh -huh. All right. So we're heading out. <clears throat> The cave was literally and figuratively a dead end. While it could certainly act as a shelter for something like a Sasquatch, there didn't seem to be any evidence of their presence in or around it. Beyond that, the fact that so much of the area was seeing human activity in the way of loggers and ATVs led me to believe that even if it was a lair at some point, those days are probably in the past. The larger cave that Corwin told us about would have to be explored someday in the future. We decided to head back to the cabin where we would spend our final night of this particular trip. We have a fire going. The last time we did a fire outside was the night that Heather and I ended up getting surrounded. So maybe it'll have the same effect. More than likely, nothing is going to happen. It has been exceptionally quiet all weekend, other than last night uh, when Adam had the... Uh, whatever the thing run toward him. So I'm going to do a knock. We'll see if we can uh, kick things off, maybe. I don't know. Fire going down here. And I have a little Zoom H1N recorder. I'm going to go up the trail leave this recorder somewhere along the trail in the woods and then head back to the fire and just leave the recorder in the woods and see if we can hear something. This looks like a good spot, honestly. I'm gonna leave it right about here. Hit the record button. We're recording. And just leave it sit here and head back up toward so there it is head back up toward the house it's funny like big footing what I'm realizing is the simplest stuff that seems to get the, the best results so something little like this maybe maybe we'll get some results Uh, we were sitting inside, talking. It's super early, so we were gonna kill some time. Something ran behind Les. I saw it take off across the window behind him. Uh, we came outside. Les, what did you hear? What just happened? We, I went, I'd done like a whoop, and we heard, like way off in the distance over this way, we heard like a whoo, like tw and I did it again, and it did it a second time. Someone want a flare? But it was like way off in the distance, so do it again. Yeah. Woo! What kind of vocal was it? It was like a, ooh, like a high, like the often, like a high pitch. We did it twice. You heard it, Adam? Yeah, I heard the second time. Woo!
Bullshit. That's from the hill over there. On the other side? I would say that's over there. That's the hill. I don't know how far away that was. It didn't echo at all. I just got a tree knock. I don't know, maybe if it was a wind blowing a tree, you know how when they rub together? Yeah. So what what I thought I saw run behind you was was light in color. Light in color? That's why it stood out. <laughs> I'm gonna do I wanna I wanna if I can see you guys if I can see you. Was it walking in basically in this direction? Running. What I saw I mean I didn't see a, a shape. It could have been an owl for all I know. All I know is that it was white or not white but light colored and it yeah, moved like, quick. Right yeah, like, right across. Uh, you want me to, to walk or run? I would say just walk, just just so we can see. You guys ready? So he was where Heather's flannels are and the drone. So he was there. Looking out that window there over the table. Ready? Yeah. I can hear him more than Yeah, I saw I yeah, I saw that. Not super clear, but I, but I mean, I could tell that something moved and I could see the, the, yeah, no, I could see something move for sure. Yeah. When he went across the window. I mean, what the thing is, what's big enough other than a deer yeah. for me to have seen. We are going up to the Rougarou what we're going to. I guess pound a barrel or something. Let's see if we can duplicate some of the sounds we've heard. But we've already had some pretty crazy activity tonight. Alright, so we've already had a vocalization or two. Now we're gonna walk. Walk or drive? What do we want to do? Walk, right? Yeah. Walk. We're gonna walk. No lights, right? Uh, what time is it? Anyone know? 8.51. We're just starting up the hill toward the uh, Rougarou Woods. Okay, just making sure it was really good. We're still on the path in the woods. Oh sh Are you seeing lights in the field? I saw a light in the field, yes. I see it too. <laughs> You're off the path, it's over here. Yeah. It's gone. <sighs> what? Dark too. Heather, say again. Adam and I both saw a light up here too. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. What color light? White, it's white. Copy. It's in the it's in the woods. I saw, I saw it too, I saw it's it in the woods. I just saw it too. It's in the woods unless that's you guys. We aren't in the woods, we're on the porch. Holy sh it's in the woods, it's in the pine woods. Turn off all your lights if you have lights on. Do you have lights on? I saw it no, no lights. They don't have lights, it's straight ahead of us. Oh my God, dude. It's straight through here. You see? It's straight through here. Look. Do you see where I'm pointing? There's a glow right through here. I saw it for just a second. It's legit, it's like in here.
through the light in the woods to the left. I don't know what I'm. I'm in the woods, but there's there's something ahead of me in the pine woods. The light off to the left. If I'm facing the woods, I see you, and then way over to the left, there's a light. We got a light way over here. She's saying. Two lights now. Two lights. What? She's got two lights. Give me a location. Um, Give, give me a location in terms of the Rougarou Woods or the Pine... Give me something to, to latch on to. Right, if you go up where the, where the footprint was, from that side of the field, that's... If, if you were to be on our side and go up where the footprints were, go left and up toward the Rougarou Woods. Dude, it's in here. Do you see our lights? Yes, I see two lights. Four lights. How many lights? I see two lights. You guys have two lights on. Okay, yeah. What do you see now? Nothing. Okay. That was us. Okay, that was us, but okay, and I can actually hear you guys, so I can hear the porch. Here's the thing, there was a light in this woods that was not you guys, because I was talking to you and you said there was no light on at the at the cabin. We were running toward a light in these woods. Are you pointing a light in our direction? Left has it on camera. Right now, there are no lights on. Do you still see it? On. It's gone? No, turn your lights off. They are off. Our lights are off. Have it on camera, Seth. It's moving. Go toward that light. I... <laughs> we don't see a light. We're in the woods. There's no light here. Do you have all of your lights off? Yes. Okay. Seth is, or Seth, Les is seeing a light on his camera right now and it's moving in the woods. Where is that really? We're not moving. Can you yeah, we're not moving. It's about halfway up the hill from the pond. Near your side. Is it still moving? Yes, it's moving. It's, I mean, it's not moving from that spot. It's just like hovering. That's us. It has to be the IR. What's it doing right now? Never mind. Is that us? Well, it's moving up and down. <laughs> yeah, that's us. It doesn't matter. There, there was a white light in here. I don't give a there was a white light in here that we were going toward, and it's gone. Okay. All right, we're heading back toward the Rougarou Woods. We, I know Adam and I both saw a white light in the field up here, booked it up into the field, broke into the field, and the light was gone. Um, we were moving perpendicular between the the pine woods and the Rougarou woods saw a light moving through the trees in the pine woods took off at a sprint into the pine woods and it was visible the entire way all the way down to the woods um, we were still looking at it went into the woods still visible ahead of us but it dimmed down to like a glow and then eventually it was just gone so that's what just happened. We're in the Rougarou Woods now. So the goal here is to go find a barrel and try to duplicate the sound that we've been Dude, there's a friggin' white light straight ahead of us. 
Do you see that? Is that is that a farm or something? Like right down this. Do you see that? Yeah. Point point to where you see it. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a white light right there. Yeah. That's got to be the farm. Isn't there a farm down there? There's a car, right? or where's this over here? That should be another Thank farm. Let's just go toward it. You guys still see it? See, I feel like I see a glow ahead of us, but I don't know. That could just be light. I feel like I'm over there. Outside, yeah, maybe it's just from the outside. All right, let's just find a barrel and bang on it. All right, so this is the truck door. I would just hit that. Just give me a second. Let me let them know. All right, we're about to hit the truck door, so this should be a metallic sound. All right. Roger. Go ahead, hit it. Did you hear that? Yeah, loud and clear, and we can even pinpoint exactly where it was at. Wow. Okay. Heather, did that sound anything like what you and I heard the night we were surrounded? Negative, she said. All right. Um, okay. There's more up here. Two, three, four. Did you hear that? Yes, but it's a lot, it's not quite as loud. It's very faint. Okay, hold on. We're gonna hit the top of it really hard, like a drum, right about now. Yeah, that was definitely louder. Heather, did that sound like what you and I heard that night when we were surrounded? She said that sounds more like it. Okay. Well, that's friggin' wild. All right, we're, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna hit the uh, metal tunnel that's up here in the paintball area, and then we're going to hit a normal tree, and then on our way out, we'll hit the uh, shed roof. But we're, we're gonna hit the metal tunnel first. It'll be, it's right here, so it's gonna be about, give us five seconds. Right here. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. She said that sounds more like it, that that was it. It, it definitely echoes that's, quite that, a bit more than anything That's else. what I thought the night we were up here, okay. All right, we're gonna do a normal tree knock right now, so give us three seconds. One, two, three. Did you hear that knock? Yeah, we heard it, but it's not very loud. Okay. The, uh, the pipe was much louder. I think they come up here and mess with this stuff just to, just to mess with us. <laughs> All right, we're heading out. On our way out of here, we're gonna knock on the shed roof that's on the outskirts of the Ruderer Woods. Go ahead. Did you hear that? That's very loud. Okay. Yeah, it, it carries very well. All right, well, that was wild. Yeah, that, I mean, that light was about as clear as you can get. Well, we, can you see? I'm going, I'm going to first time. <laughs> Kind of focus your eyes. You see where you can see the horizon, like right through here? Yeah. That's where that, we, you guys are still up here because we saw your light. Yeah. And I saw, we both saw a white light, like really quick go across through there. Okay. I mean, a legit concern would be that it might be poachers. Yeah, that's what I, I, you know, like last night when I saw that red light, I thought about that too. If you know, somebody's up there. Wait, did you use the thermal though? I don't have the thermal. I, I got it. Yeah, I didn't say anything. I looked, all, I looked up and down the thing once I got it on. But it was strange. Heather and I were sitting out here talking just about stuff and uh, like because she was talking about doing some things out the house and I asked her if she ever done like the Estes session up here like she did at the house uh -huh. 
And she said, yeah, they did it once, and they would hear, or they seen some strange stuff back here. And right after she said that is when we heard the two whistles. There were two whistles? Yeah, it went, it, went, it was like, and then we get a few minutes later, a few seconds later, it did it again. She don't think that was a goose? That third one was a goose for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, but I, why is there a goose over there? Because here's the nearest pond. Right. I mean, I know there's, they fly during the day, they're migrating through here unless there's something unless there's one nested down somewhere over there but yeah that third time was a goose well they sounded really like a goose dude it sounded like a person going hoot whoop yeah. that's what it sounded like <laughs> I heard it. Another day is coming to a close. Um, I don't know what to say about it. We did not have a lot of activity. I wouldn't say there was no activity. We had some stuff happen, but um, definitely wasn't wasn't the most active night we've had or active weekend. You know, the weather changed and it was raining the first two days and then just bitter cold here today um, overall it was it was fairly quiet with some moments of I would say high strangeness so but that's it it's another weekend in the books and uh, we'll be back next week for more